Hello and welcome to Boden in Swedish Lapland. When I started to do astrophotography about two years ago, I started with uh, this one. This is the, the Canon EOS 60D DSLR, self-modified. Uh, but the first year I struggled, struggled a lot with the hobby and I was never quite excited over my results. Um, the images uh, were quite noisy and I thought it was a hassle to to shoot the darks because with a non-cooled uh, camera like this you have to shoot uh, the darks at the same occasion as uh, you shoot the lights to get the same temperature. And as I'm often out in very cold temperatures it was not often that fun to stay out for one or two hours more just to shoot the dark frames. So I, I decided that I wanted a dedicated ASO camera and since I also had the ASIR Pro, I was uh, restricted to CWO cameras. So I went for, for this one, the CWO ASI 2600MC Pro, which has an APS-C sized sensor. Uh, and after using it for a year, I feel comfortable to doing a kind of review of this camera. This is a sturdy piece. It weighs in at 734 grams uh, and feels uh, solid and well built. It's uh, considerable bulkier than the ASIR 1600, which I have here. Uh, I shoot from remote locations uh, most of the time and I have carried this one together um, with my tube in my backpack and I have pulled it in a sled and I have used it in freezing temperatures below minus 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, actually, I have only used this one a, a few times in temperatures warmer than zero degrees Celsius. Most of the time it has been temperatures below minus 10 or minus 20 degree. However, there has been a leakage issue reported where silicon grease has uh, contaminated uh, the sensor. Um, I have not experienced it on my camera and uh, for all I know and understand it's uh, pretty easy to clean also but anyway annoying if it happens to your camera. Uh, I don't know if it, uh, it's restricted to, to, to some batch or something. The 2600MC used the Sony IMX571 backlit APS-C sized sensor with zero amp glow. Uh, it has a diagonal of the sensor of 28.3 mm. The resolution is 26 megapixel. So on the horizontal way you have 6248 pixels and on the vertical way you have 4176 pixels. The pixel size is 3.76 micrometer. Smaller pixel size gives you better resolution, but traditional you sacrifice some light sensitivity. Uh, but 3.76 micrometer is a good mid-sized uh, pixel size. The full well capacity in this camera is 50,000 electrons, which is very good. Uh, it's uh, significantly better than in my former EOS. The full well is an electron storage capacity in each pixel. The higher full well cap capacity, the more light you can uh, record without uh, the pixel gets oversaturated. And this helps to avoid that uh, uh, bright areas and the stars get uh, oversaturated and bloated. If these glasses were pixels and the water electrons, the larger glass has better full well capacity and could store more electrons before getting saturated. It could also be noted that smaller pixels suffered from poor well capacity in the past, but as semiconductor technology improves, this disadvantage is about to disappear. QE, or quantum efficiency, is together with read noise and full well death one of the most important factors to measure the performance of a camera. Quantum efficiency is the sensor's ability to convert photons to electrons and uh, the 2600MC Pro 
has a QE of 80% at uh, specific wavelengths, which is uh, remarkably good. And this means that uh, up to 80% of all incoming photons to the sensor will be converted to electrons. The camera also has very low read noise and uh, a dynamic range of almost 14 steps. For me, this camera has been a giant step forward when it comes to image quality. I made some unscientific comparison last year and uh, 20 minutes with this one gave me way better result than more than two hours uh, with, uh, uh, with my former EOS when I shot the Play 8's uh, Messier 45. This version of the Orion Nebula is also an excellent example of the capacity of the camera. This image consists only of subs of 180 seconds and as you can see the core has not been burned out. The normal recommendation is to shoot the core at shorter exposure times to avoid it uh, blowing out. This is another example, the M31 Andromeda Galaxy. The total integration time is 2 hours and I shot 5 minutes subs. My first tryouts on the M31 with my EOS are not even close. With this image I was one of the winners in the Swedish Space Agency's astrophotography contest this, this year. Uh, I think it's one of my best images so far and it has a high level of detail and it's very crispy. When I'm doing astrophotography I use the ASIR Pro. I found out quite early that it was not really possible to do astrophotography with, uh, with a laptop in, in these conditions in Swedish Lapland. With the ASIR Pro I control everything from a tablet and uh, the setup is very easy. Um, when shooting with the ASIR there are only two gain settings to choose from with the 2600MC, 0 up to 100. Uh, the difference between those gain settings is, uh, is very small uh, and I have most often shot at uh, gain 100. Uh, this is also obvious when looking at CWO's um, own doc documentation. When I did uh, M42 Nebula I shot at uh, gain 0 and that is maybe a target when you could consider to use this uh, lower gain setting just to maximize uh, the dynamic uh, range. The obvious reason to buy a cooled uh, astro camera is to minimize the noise. Another very big advantage, uh, at least in my opinion, is uh, that you don't need to shoot the darks at the same time as you shoot the lights. You can create a library with uh, darks at uh, different uh, exposure settings and uh, temperatures that you use when you stack your files. For an example, I have a library with, uh, with, with darks at uh, 180, 270 and 300 seconds at minus 20 and, and uh, minus 30 degrees Celsius just to cover my field settings easy. Uh, that makes a life a lot more easy, especially if you're up here in the, in the Arctic because it's not uh, that uh, fun to be, be out one or two hours more to shoot the darks when you are tired and just want to go home and sleep. The 2600 MC Pro is a tremendous camera. It's robust and sturdy built and has endured the conditions that I meet during the harsh winter season in, in Swedish Lapland. Uh, the specifications are impressive and for me the camera has helped me to take a huge step forward in my development as an astrophotography. If I had uh, known what I now know I would have bought a dedicated uh, astro camera di directly and jumped the first step with the EOS. But maybe I would have jumped on a mono camera directly. Uh, now I have bought uh, at 1600mm also, so I will start to convert to mono shooting, so it will be very interesting to see 
and compare the results from this one shot color camera and my 1600mm in the future but one step at a time uh, that was all for now so don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow my arctic astrophotography adventure